Welcome back. Uh, this is the continuance of the design portion. We started last time. If you're following along, there's about four other videos that preceded this. So go ahead and check those out if you haven't already. Um, they're pretty long, so I apologize for the length, but um, that's the kind of the point with this whole series. I want to show basically behind the scenes of what's going on here. Um, and with that said, uh, I, we actually finally shot photos um, yesterday, and I meant to actually record me and Alyssa taking photos. Obviously, she's the subject matter, so you won't see me in these, but um, I forgot to totally do that. So uh, essentially, I've got some raw camera files here, and I use, right now I have a Canon, I forget the model. It's a Rebel, I think. Not not like an EOS awesome one, but still pretty dang badass. So use that to get these photos. I think this video will be me maybe taking one photo or two or three and re uh, editing those. I'll do the rest off screen because that can get pretty boring. But um, I wanted to show you at least part of that process rather than just drag you know a complete photo into the design and you know magically it appears uh, in the real world that stuff doesn't happen as fast so we'll get into that right now if you recall this is our design as it stands um, the general feel I think we're gonna roll with this style guide as you've remembered before if you haven't again go back and check the other videos um, a lot of white space is the key. So with that in mind, the actual color of the photo itself probably needs to be tweaked a bit because a lot of these are shot with actual daylight as the light. Although we do have a camera lighting set that I used in the background to kind of protrude more light. And also, if you notice this thing, it's a sunroof on my house. So we actually shot these at the house. Uh, so you're getting a little taste of what my place looks like. Um, it's cheaper than driving somewhere and setting up there and tr trying to ask for permission. Although we might do that with more photos as they come. So some of these were great. Some were kind of a little a blurry. Um, some I was terrible at shooting. I'm not the most, I guess, novice photographer, but I did okay. I think some of these I actually cut Alyssa's head off or they're blurry like this a little bit. So my bad there but i think we can uh, salvage a few of these and make them work i think what i'm going to end up doing is deleting a lot of the backgrounds off of some of these some are going to be actual shots like this and others will be actual portraits something like this yeah so we'll probably you know clip this maybe do some touch-ups here and there nothing major but the tonalities of the photo itself need to change, I think, to match our design a bit. But I think overall it should work out. So we've got some goofy ones. <laughs> some, re like I said, some reusable. Some, re I think, in any photo shoot, if you've been in one, it's a needle in a haystack kind of feel. You shoot like hundreds of photos, fill up a SD card, and then it's you know you get maybe two or three out of the bunch, and that's just reality. So. There's no perfect way to get you know the perfect shot the first time. So with that said, I'm gonna open a setting type of photo like this, and then one that's more of a straight on. I kind of dig this photo. Um, I'm going to probably keep the elements and maybe remove the background so we can use this. And then maybe do one of these types of photos as just kind of a, like that's a good chip, good photo. I might use that. So maybe we'll start there, it's a little easier. I'm gonna use Affinity Photo to get rolling. And with raw photos, um, Affinity does it their way. Photoshop, if you opened it this way, it would open, I think, a different, I don't know, settings to where you can adjust everything before it actually saves down. So like here, I'm, I'm doing the same thing, but it's Affinity's photos way of doing things. So in terms of tweaking this stuff, I might desaturate just a tad. Uh, the tones are a little warm. Might increase a little bit of the curves just to give it a little oomph.
and this is all to me it's just freaking trial and error so if if you're like on the other end of this and you're seeing me just destroy this photo apologies but the least amount of changes but still retain what's you know the actual photo itself you don't want to go overboard Curves, which is cool. I always use curves. I don't know if you guys have, have done that. You typically like it's broken up into these squares. About halfway up on the top right square, I grab the line and just go touch more. And then the same with the bottom, I go a touch less. Just kind of emphasizes the subject matter in the photo. I'm not gonna use black and white. We almost want it to be a little less warm, I guess is the best way to describe it. So I'm trying to add kind of a similar cooler color. Okay, I think that should be fine. Before is on the right and after is on the left, so a little warmer. I might bring this back down a little. Not a huge difference, but I think it looks all right. So let's, go, let's run with that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a different file just so I don't wreck the original. I'll just do desktop for now. Let's say Alyssa portrait. Okay. So there are several ways to remove the background uh, in Affinity Photo. There's actual background erase tool. It's just like a brush. That, but that's really free handy if that's a word obviously you can see that it works but it's kind of like eek my preferred way is to use the what do they call it uh, selection brush tool it's kind of like a magnetic lasso tool in Photoshop if you're used to that but you can kind of expand and contract on what it selects based on key commands so I'm holding option and clicking and it actually goes back out to the edge um, if you're in the app and you start doing that you'll get used to it real fast but it might be kind of weird at first I'm gonna go a little overboard uh, because I want to refine well actually let's let's go back I kind of want to refine getting some of these realistic trailing hairs outside of the actual dome of her head here. The same with this hair, it's important. We'll see how well I can do with this. Hair is really challenging. So, fair warning if it doesn't turn out. <laughs> In fact, I should probably duplicate this layer. For safety's sake and then at this point you can just delete the background I need to turn that layer off and that looks atrocious right yeah so at this point you can refine the edges though so let's try that
it did. So if we do inverse of the layer, invert pixel selection, delete that. It's a little softer. It's still kind of convoluted, if that's a word either. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to freehand some of this. It's just kind of the route I usually have to go. This hair is gonna be a challenge. In fact, maybe we'll do a little more on that. All right, let's see what happens there. Nothing. That's what I thought. Okay. I'll do it my old way. I don't think a computer is just going to really make it perfect for us. So my preferred like old school way is to either pin, pin out everything or just do a mask so you don't actually destroy the photo and come back in and just brush some of these elements out, make it softer on the edges. It's more realistic basically, but what to, f to help this, I think I'm gonna put a solid color in the background if I can. Let's add a layer and fill it like some not regular color. There we go. Should be on a white background, but having a darker background should help me brush out things that I think we can remove. So I think I have it clipped decently. Um, we can always go back in and tweak things. The hair, obviously, as you saw, is kind of a pain. Uh, there's other ways to do it. You could work with actual, what do they call, levels, or no, not levels, channel, channel filters, something like that. Um, I don't really do it that way. Uh, I don't know, it's just not really, I think you add a new one. I've never really done it that way, but you add a new one and it ends up being like a, a mask of the actual inverted version of it. And then you create a selection, then you modify it, all that jazz. To me, if I'm hands-on, I can kind of tweak things, you know, to a T. Obviously there's unrealisticness of, there's no, you know, trailing hairs up here, but I think someone that's, you know, looking on a website probably won't pay that much attention to see if she has, you know, some frizzy hair going on. I don't, I don't think so. One thing I see are these lighter shades of hair. I might tweak here, see what kind of tools we can use for that. Maybe I'm painting. Yeah, there we go. This tool is pretty sweet. Um, it finds stuff that shouldn't be in a photo and basically gets rid of it to summarize.
So for grins, I'm gonna see what this looks like right here. I imagine we'll still need to tweak some things. Just remove that. Hopefully this doesn't crash. I've had that happen before. Uh, let's see. Ah. I like it, cool. So there's still some, I would say, things we could do in terms of maybe adding a light source to this. Um, maybe coming from the top, you would probably wanna do that in Affinity Photo. Sorry for moving that. So let me experiment with that a little bit. Because I in the actual photo I shot, the light source is dead on, it was straight at her. And I used uh, can lights or whatever they're called uh, to do that. For this, you can use a pretty cool thing, if I can find it, let me select a layer. Lighting, and it does this thing, which will tweak a lot. It's too much. Um, whoa. All right, let's do spot. And this thing's way up here. So the idea is to make it um, sort of like that, but not like too much, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Zoom in maybe. Um, let's see, ambience. What I don't like, you see how I do that and it goes shadowy? I don't like that. So it's kind of almost like, should I use this at all at the moment? But I think it's working. I just screwed that up, did not mean to. Something like that. Apparently you can add texture too. That's kind of interesting. Do distance. Um, I think that's decent. Specular color, can I adjust this to something? the hell that does we're going back to white okay you can add multiple lights that's interesting no way though okay let's try that and see what comes of it it kind of looks a little fake so I might revert I think it needs to be a bigger spread of the light because it's shadowed down below and I'm not digging that. Though I do like the effect. So I think I'm gonna revert. Hopefully I can. And let's try that again. It's a little contrasty, if that's a word. <laughs> I'll be using all these random words on these screencasts. I hope you enjoy those. I'm going to try it with this. 
And it's massive again. The raw photos, if you can shoot in raw, I'd really recommend it. You can do a lot more uh, things basically because the image is so huge. Awesome. This is this turned out like I had hoped. Little string um, things with the hair might come back to haunt me. You can still see some of the brown on the wall. Um, it's something I might fix before ultimately going with this. Uh, I won't... Well, shit. I'll just do that real quick and then we'll probably end the video. You guys can follow along or you can end it here. Whatever you want to do. I just kind of wanted to wrap this up. And from there, we will continue maybe to the next photo to get the photos complete and ready to use basically so I don't have to kind of wait or stall progress on the actual design portion. But I will speed this part up and you guys can go ahead and move to the next video. So I'll see you there.